Fortifications in Hell Let Loose are a lot like insurance. They're gonna cost you, and you may never end up even utilizing them. But if the enemy comes knocking on the door of the strong point you just built up, you'll be pretty damn happy you have that insurance. During the warm up period at the start of the game, the whole team is basically sitting around in trucks making dick jokes. My hammer looks slightly bigger than yours. <laughs> Yeah, but I use mine more efficiently than yours. And singing karaoke while eagerly waiting for the game to start. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. This makes it an ideal time to let others know that you plan to fortify one of the strong points and hopefully recruit some other players to help you out. Use local chat to ask if there are any other engineers who can help you place blueprints and build, or support players who can drop supply boxes for you. You want your engineers focused on placing blueprints and building fortifications, not driving supply trucks. So try to find someone who's willing to run supplies for you. This really can be anyone that's willing. Now once you've assembled your band of misfits, you'll need to decide on which strong point you want to focus on building up, and it's crucial that you choose wisely. So here are some tips to help you decide which spot to focus on. First, you want to pick a strong point that's close to your HQ. Being close to HQ greatly reduces the driving time when running supply trucks back and forth to the point. And the faster you can get supplies, the more time you'll have to strategize and build before the enemy comes a knocking. Trust me guys, the last thing you want is to be under attack while trying to build your fortifications. That's like the fire alarm going off when you're right in the middle of taking a big grumpy shit. Yeah, you're gonna get the job done, but it's gonna be ugly. So building closer to HQ than the front line provides you with that buffer you need to work in peaceful tranquility. You should also be sure to take a look at the different terrain features in and around the strong points you're choosing between. Maybe there's a hill that gives you high ground and superior sight lines, or a cluster of houses that would provide for great hard cover, or a natural choke point that'll allow you to funnel enemies yeah, into yeah. a dangerous kill zone. And consider which direction the bulk of the enemy team is going to be coming from on their way to capture your strong point, and factor that in when determining whether or not those terrain features will actually be beneficial to your team. Ultimately, you want to decide on whichever strong point will give you the biggest tactical advantage over the enemy. One of the biggest mistakes people make is choosing a small, mostly closed off area to hole up in, and then closing off the entrances with something like barbed wire. Sure, this will keep the enemy out. The problem here is that you're also keeping your own team from leaving, which can bottle them up into a small area that can very easily be approached, surrounded, and absolutely devastated with things like grenades, MG fire, consistent artillery, bombing runs, strafing runs, and precision strikes. In order to effectively defend a strong point, you need to be able to defend it from the inside and outside of the fortifications. The fortifications you build should make it difficult for the enemy to even approach your strong point, let alone overwhelm it. Building them all right on the strong point doesn't achieve this, which means you'll have to fight the enemy up close with your back against the wall and very limited mobility. So keep this in mind when deciding which strong point to fortify. Now once you've made your decision, be sure to share that with your squad leader and suggest that they communicate your plan in command chat. Okay. I want to tell command chat if uh, any squad leads have engineers that want to help us for building up uh Orchards. This will keep everyone in the loop and might even encourage some other players to join you in your efforts. Remember that many of the roles in the game have a hammer in their loadout and they can help you build things faster while earning some nice XP in the process. But before you can go swinging your fat hammer around, you're going to need some supplies. The bulk of your supplies are going to come from a supply truck. If you're playing warfare mode, keep in mind that your commander and or squad leaders will need those supply trucks to build garrisons for the team as quickly as possible in order to capture the middle sector before the enemy does. So don't go stealing the initial supply truck. Instead, ask the commander to spawn an additional supply truck once he's able to, so you can use it to build some defenses. When making supply truck runs, try to find the quickest and least complicated route to and from the strong point. You don't want to risk getting your supply truck stuck by crossing over ditches, trenches, streams, rocks, twigs, dandelions, ants, individual grains of sand. You also need to be cognizant of where you drop your supplies. Don't just shit them out in the middle of the road because you'll actually end up box blocking yourself since you can't actually drive through the supply boxes. Now, one of the first things you want to do is build a manpower node in the area you're about to fortify. You see, when support players drop their supply box, there's a five minute cooldown period before they're able to drop another supply box. But having a manpower node on the point will cut the supply box cooldown in half. You can also request supply drops from the commander if he has the resources available in order to quickly generate additional supplies. Okay, so once you've got a steady stream of supplies flowing into the strong point, you can start to place blueprints and build out your 
your defensive structures. Now when deciding what to build and where to build it, you need to put yourself in the enemy's soggy, wet boots. What terrain features will they most likely try to use to approach your strong point? Is there a hedgerow that's going to give them hard cover during their approach? How will they most likely attempt to flank you? Are there back alleys that funnel into the point? What about a trench network they can stick to to close in on you? Identify those areas of opportunity for the enemy and think about how you can go about disrupting them. And conversely, try to identify some of their worst areas of approach and see if there's a way you can force the enemy into taking that approach by blocking off the more ideal ones. Yeah, baby. Alright, now that's oh, gonna yeah. force them way the fuck over here, and we've got an AT gun facing this exact direction. Now when it comes to blocking enemy infantry, the very best tool you have at your disposal is barbed wire. Barbed wire will stop enemy infantry dead in their tracks if placed properly, and unless they destroy it with a satchel charge, they'll be forced to find another route to the strong point. This makes it ideal for controlling where the battle takes place and forcing the enemy to fight on your terms. So let's get into some tips for using barbed wire effectively. You want to try to keep your barbed wire a good 50 meters or more out from the area you're trying to defend. This helps create a distance buffer between you and the approaching enemy, which keeps their grenades just outside of throwing distance and gives your own team more room to maneuver and change up angles while defending. If you've ever been on the team that's attacking the Win 7 strong point on Utah Beach, then you've experienced what a headache some well-placed barbed wire can cause. This strong point is almost entirely enclosed in barbed wire, with trenches, bunkers, and buildings being fully accessible to the defending team. The attacking team has to cross open fields just to reach the barbed wire defenses. And even if they do manage to funnel into the small openings in the barbed wire, this is exactly where the defending team is concentrating the bulk of their firepower. So without some serious coordination, support from friendly tanks, and effective artillery and bombing runs, this is an extremely difficult point to capture. Now a single engineer can only build up to four pieces of barbed wire, so in order to enclose a strong point like this, you're going to need to have multiple engineers all working together. You can build your four barbed wire, then switch roles so your squad mates can switch to engineer and add additional strands of barbed wire. Oh, have you not been on NG yet? I haven't been on NG yet, no. Oh, perfect. Oh, you got all your barbed. I got all my barbed and all the other shit. Increasing the total by four for each player who's willing to do so. But do keep these limits in mind when deciding where to build your defenses and choose wisely. Now barbed wire does not block enemy tanks, however one fun little trick is to place AT mines beneath your barbed wire. When that cocky ass tank crew decides to roll right through your pathetic little barbed wire, they'll have a nice little surprise waiting for them. Oh, and speaking of barbed wire, I commonly see people build barbed wire and then build a barricade right in front of it. In my opinion, this simply is not effective. In fact, it's counterproductive. Barbed wire already stops infantry on its own, so adding a barricade in front of it or behind it only provides the enemy with some nice hard cover while they place a satchel on it and blow a hole in your defenses. Don't think of barricades as a blocking tool. Instead, think of them as a source of hard cover for your own team in a pinch when the strong point otherwise lacks it. Belgian gates, on the other hand, can be an effective blocking tool. Just be aware that the ramp side can be climbed, so be sure to rotate them so the ramp side is facing your own team. This will create sort of a one-way door, so to speak, that keeps enemies out but gives your team the option to leave should they need to. They can also be used to climb up to otherwise inaccessible areas like rooftops, which can give your snipers and machine gunners better sight lines of all the enemies out in the distance struggling to get around your well-placed barbed wire. Another decent blocking tool is hedgehogs, which can be used to block tanks and other vehicles from utilizing the main roadways and force them into going off-road where there's a better chance they might get stuck. Bridges can be a great place to put hedgehogs as they prevent enemy tanks from crossing and can really slow down their advance. Again, try to put yourself in the enemy tank crew's tracks. If you were to approach a blocked road, where would you most likely go to get around it? Answer this question, then go ahead and place some AT mines there. Now let's talk about bunkers. If positioned properly, bunkers can be an effective tool as well, but they need to be placed in positions that have a good line of sight and where they won't easily be flanked and overrun by incoming enemies. Bunkers should never be your first line of defense either. They should only be built once you closed off enemy access to the strong point with barbed wire using the tips and strategies we already covered. Their main purpose, similar to barricades, is to provide your team with some additional hard cover and help protect your infantry from incoming artillery, bombing runs, and tank shells. In fact, you can even build a garrison inside of a level 3 German bunker, which has a concrete roof that can provide some protection from incoming artillery and bombing runs. 
Just build a level 1 bunker, build a garrison inside of it, and then proceed to upgrade the bunker to level 3. Having effective armor support while defending the strong point can also give your team a huge advantage. You can build a repair station near the back lines of the strong point that your tank crews can utilize to quickly repair when they've taken damage. This saves valuable time as they won't have to drive all the way back to HQ to repair or put their crew members at risk when they hop out to repair the tank. So work with your tank crews to decide on an ideal placement for your repair stations. Now on the subject of tanks taking damage, you'll need to be prepared to deal with incoming enemy armor. Once you think you've nailed down which direction the enemy tanks are most likely to approach from, see if you can get one of your anti-tank teammates to deploy on the fortified strong point and put down a blueprint for an anti-tank gun facing that direction. You can then build the gun and it'll be there ready to rock if need be. To further prepare to deal with enemy armor, it's a good idea to have support players drop explosive ammo on the point. This gives AT players the ability to replenish their rockets, but also replenishes AT and AP mines which can be used to create minefields and choke points for incoming infantry and tanks. They can also place small arms ammo boxes on the point so that machine gunners can replenish their ammo and other players can replenish their grenades. Now aside from all this, you need to make sure you have infantry patrolling the entire 2x2 square cap zone and not just sitting on the cap circle waiting to defend. This helps prevent the enemy from getting near the fortified position where they can throw smoke, frags, and use satchel charges to blow holes in your defenses. This creates multiple layers of defense that the enemy has to deal with, and it's a very effective way to keep them off balance at all times. Plus, by patrolling the perimeters of the strong point, you're far more likely to find and destroy enemy outposts and garrisons, which really takes all of the steam out of their advance. But perhaps the single most important factor in successfully defending the point, even more important than your fortification placement is your garrison placement. Don't just put a single garrison inside the point. You need to have multiple garrisons outside of the fortified position as well. This gives your team multiple options and angles for which to defend from. Without a sound garrison strategy, your fortification efforts are completely useless. And that's why you need to watch my winning garrison strategy video next, as it'll complement what you just learned about fortification strategies and give you the best possible chance of a successful defense. I'll catch you guys over in that video.